this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to talk to you about the differences between the SL120V2s from Lian Lee Li and the original SL120s, and show them side by side. You'll see the originals here with the darker grey rubber anti-vibration mounts and the edges, so pay attention to that because you'll be able to spy the differences. And there are some other subtle differences, and interesting ones in terms of specs, design, aesthetics, connections and more that make them worth talking about. Now on paper, these fans have been improved in a number of different ways. The specs are better. This has a superior design. The new SL120 V2s are ever so slightly thicker. You can see they sit a little bit higher than the originals and also deliver a better airflow. Leon Lee says he's got about 10% airflow improvement. On paper, that means that you get 64.5 CFM versus the original 58.54 CFM. And you also have a better static pressure with 2.59 millimeters H2O versus 2.54. And also, interestingly, they've reduced the output of the noise. So potentially you only have about 29 decibels now versus 31 on the original. Also, the speeds are different as well. So the new SL120V2s will ramp up from 0 to 2,000 RPM, whereas the originals only went from 800 to 1,900. Things to bear in mind, and I'll talk a bit more about that as we go through. But here you can see a comparison between the two. So this is the original SL120s and then the SL120V2s. You'll notice, for example, that the rear of the original SLs is not as nice looking as the new ones, which have a better design with aluminium sticker in the middle. Now it's worth noting that the shots of the SL120s that I have are the very original SL120s when they first launched. There was a second variation that is ever so slightly different and had a little bit more aesthetic. Some people have told me, for example, there was an extra sticker in the box. They also changed the design of the screw holes but you will notice significant differences here in that logic because the screw holes are bigger in order to accommodate radiator screws and more on that in a minute because that's interesting as well if you put them side by side you'll notice as i said that the new versions are ever so slightly thicker but they are also cleverly designed in that the gap between them when you connect them up because these are uni fans that will slot together is actually smaller so the rgb lighting basically connects up nicer the other thing that's pretty clever is little tiny details so you'll see that the clips on the end where the fans clip together are removable so where you've got a fan that's sitting at the end of the chain of fans that you've grouped together you can now take those off so that they're out of the way which is ideal if you're mounting it on a liquid cooling radiator or in a full liquid cooled system for example makes things cleaner here you can see the holes on the sl120s are now oblong versus the original circular holes. This also allows for radiator screws. And also you'll see that it's recessed in the housing, which means you can sort of hide away the top of the screws a bit more. Also, they recommend using the included screws. Now there are some differences in the connectors as well, which I want to talk about, because it's these little design changes which have made life easier for the installation process and for the setup. Also, you won't just be able to buy the new fans and use the original control box if you're upgrading from the original SL120s to the V2, so it's worth bearing in mind. I've done a separate video on the wiring of these fans, the new ones, and talking about how to set them up in your case. So be sure to check out that link in the description to find out more about the details. But here I'm just going to show you some of the bits of it. So the new SL120 V2s are on the left hand side, obviously. And you'll notice also the new controller is on the left. And there are some differences between the new controller and the old one and also the connections. So on the original SL120s, you had this connector cable which clipped in to the fan and then it came with two cables that came out of it one for rgb and one for power and as i'll show you you connect that up and then you obviously plug those into the control box there are other things that you can do with it you could connect it directly to your motherboard's rgb and fan power connection so there are various ways of doing it but usually you'd want the controller and then you have these two cables that you'd then plug in since then, Lee and Lee has improved the system to make life a little bit easier, but you can see me plugging them in here, and you have the ability to plug in up to 16 fans in this controller in groups of up to four, so you can have four fans thing. So usually you don't need more than one controller for most cases, which is pretty handy. Now they've made a change where basically you have this flat connector that plugs in here onto the SL120 V2s, and you'll notice that it's a lot more recessed. Also, if you buy a triple pack, 
you get this flat connector. So it's one cable instead of two that plugs into the control box. It is fatter at the end, but the cable itself is really thin and easy to manage. And what you will notice is that basically makes life a lot easier because you now have one cable instead of two. And if you have a group of fans, you still only have one cable. And so cable management is a bit nicer. Also, you'll notice that the cable doesn't stick out as far on the fan itself. So this makes life a lot easier. Now, as I said, I've done an in-depth video on how to wire them all up, showing a demonstration of it here. So this is a taste of what you'll see if you watch the other video. And essentially, you can just group these fans together. They all click together and you can put four fans together in a group or three, as I have done here, because that's what you will do in most cases, and then connect a single cable from that into the control box. This is really straightforward. And it was the sort of logic with the original SL120s, and that's what made them appealing. But on those, you would have had two cables from each of the fan groups instead of just one. So now the cables have been slimmed down, which makes life a little easier. The other thing that's interesting, though, is if you buy a triple back of the SL120 V2s, you now have the ability to daisy chain, which is one of the differences, one of the big differences between the two fans, is that you get this connector, which essentially allows you to put two groups of fans together. So you can see I've got three fans on the bottom, and then I've got three fans on the right-hand side, and I've clipped this cable between them, and then you have the other end, the cable that was originally plugged in, that takes your power and RGB to the controller. So you can then basically put two groups together. You can have six fans on one connection. Now, the controller can still only manage up to a maximum of 16, but this allows for some flexibility in what cables you're plugging in and where in the case, whether you want to have less cables run into the back of your case, or you want to do some clever things around the front of the case or you just want to put them in sequence and you can also obviously remove fans and take them out so you could have three and one or three and three or three and two or two and two so you have a choice in how you'd sort of daisy chain these up so it gives even more flexibility in the daisy chaining connection which you didn't have previously with the original fans now the original sl120s were fantastic and i'd still recommend them i still think they're fantastic all of them are actually the sl120 infinities are also great and the al120s and you can see some of the differences in like the rgb lighting aesthetically they're very subtle differences, I think. But what you will notice is that the RGB is a little bit closer on the new SL120s V2s. So the gap between the fans is tighter. Everything is a bit more compact. It's a really intelligently thought out in terms of the aesthetic in various different ways and also the logic of it. Things like being able to remove the clips from the end of the chain, for example. A smaller, more compact cable management system means that you can easily mount things in and have a neater cable management at the end. Also, the end aesthetic is really nice. Now, it's important, obviously, to talk about performance. And what I've found is that the new SL120 V2s are really quiet. I've gone into a lot more depth on the settings and what you can do with it in the, the unboxing. So be sure to check out that video where I go into the software and show you what you can do with the RGB lighting and things. But as I said, these fans actually have a zero RPM mode. So the new SL120 V2s will, it can be set so that they don't spin until your PC gets to a certain temperature. Whereas the original fans were always at least a minimum of a hundred RPM. So you have a lot quieter potential there. Also, the new fans will start at 250 RPM potentially, and then can ramp all the way up to 2000 RPM. So you have really good airflow capabilities. And I have found on the daily use that they're really quiet as well. So you can put them into quiet mode and they'll still deliver really good cooling performance. You can see here on my Kraken cooler that you'll get a glance of roughly what the temperatures are. And you can see that under reasonably heavy use from video editing and things, I'm getting about 40 degrees on the CPU and just over 50 on the GPU. And I've got uh, six intake fans and four exhausts in this Lee and Lee Dynamic Evo. So I'm really happy with the performance of it, how quiet it is, and also how good looking they are. They're really nice looking fans. You can see quite a nice bit of RGB glow from them. You can also sync it with the lighting on your motherboard and do a lot of other things. Some of the things are very similar, obviously, but you do have the flexibility of RGB lighting. And one of the other things is you can also sync the lighting now, so you can have a linked to streamers, for example, that you have in your case, and you can customize things a lot more in the software. But as I said, check out the unboxing to find out more about that. Hopefully you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Be sure to check out the description for more information. Thanks for watching.